Windows, Linux, and Mac on a single computer whereby I can boot into Microsoft, Ubuntu, which is a Linux Mint, and Mac OS on a single one. So that's Windows. Ta-da! Second one. We've got Linux, Mac OS version. And voila. Here we go. That's job done. Windows, Linux, and Mac on a single computer. And I'm gonna keep this in one shot as customary on the channel sometimes. And while this is on, I'm gonna bring you over and give you some sort of introduction. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Ash from Hill My Tech. And on this channel, I wanna help you develop a better relationship with technology. So consider subscribing, enable the bell notification icon so I can help you go from the B2 Techie. Now, this is the One PC Tool Them All Challenge series, all right? And I've got on the system, if you're new here, catch you up. There are three SanDisk 240 uh, gigabyte SSD, one here and two at the back. So go to the link above and the video below for in the description uh, to follow the series. Now I've reconnected them today and on the boot order, if you can see on top, we've got UEFI OS on SATA 4. Uh, and then we've got Windows Boot Manager, SETA 1, Ubuntu, SETA 2, and then there's also SETA 4, 1, and 2 as uh, single disks. Sorry if it's a bit fuzzy. And uh, then we've got Enter Setup. So let's do the first boot. I'm going to press Enter. And here, because I've done the Mac last, we actually have an EFI system whereby I can boot into Microsoft, Ubuntu, which is a Linux Mint, and Mac OS from a single one. We're gonna start with Microsoft Windows. And again, still in one shot. So the way to do this guys, is when you are going to install the OS, you do it on separate disk, but you disconnect every um, disk. You don't wanna keep them connected. And there we have it. I'm just input my password. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. I've kept it the same, all of them. And there you go. So that's Windows, that's job number one. I'm going to now restart that. And uh, again, I'm going to press F11 to get back to the boot order. While this is restarting and I hope Microsoft is not going to do updates on me. And I hope this does not fail me. Okay, so while this is happening, like I was saying, you install them separately. And after you've done, you, um, get your UEFI OEFI order. So again, we can go back to the same EFI because I did the Mac last. Now we've tried Microsoft, Saigon is gonna be Linux Mint. It says Ubuntu here, obviously, because it is based on the Ubuntu distro, but Linux Mint, it's its own thing. And obviously there are others like Manjaro or Arch Linux you could try, which by the way reminds me, is it Linux or Linux? I've been told off on this and here we go. The second one, let me just input my little password here, which I've tried to keep the same and might be a bit loud. Ta-da, second one, we've got Linux. All right, so that's OS number two. And then let's just off that, we're gonna restart and we're gonna go to OS number three, which is gonna be Mac, hopefully, which I've just done today. Again, same principle, I'm gonna press F11 to enter the boot order. Okay, and uh, I wanna give a shout out to Chris from Chris Titus Tech because he helped me do the last one today because his tutorial was excellent. Again, we're gonna select the same UEFI OS, go back to the same menu and this time boot Mac OS from Mac OS. And hopefully after a very ugly looking uh, startup bit, which hopefully will change at some point. Um, I have to say, I have to mention, this is not the normal way of getting Mac OS, guys. I'm sure you understand what I mean. I'm not going to say certain words here on this channel because I might get into trouble. But this is not the normal way. And also, this is High Sierra. This is not the latest Mac OS version. And let me just input my password again. It's my password is password. I think my password is password. And voila. I don't know why this activity monitor keeps coming up, but here we go. And that's job done. So let me put you back on the stand and I will finish this off 
and I'm about to fall because I am keeping this in one shot. Actually, from this point on, I probably don't need to keep it one shot. All right, folks, so this is my method of doing more than one uh, operating system on any single PC, either you're dual booting or triple booting. I would advise that you use more than one drive to install your OS, unless you've got no choice, you've got like one laptop or space for one drive or whatever your situation may be. In which case, I would think twice before wanting to dual boot, let alone triple boot. But if you can afford it in terms of space and you have the disk like this one, I've got plenty of disk space. I wanted to put a single operating system on each drive, but similar drives, which is the SanDisk uh, 240 gigabyte SSD. Now, every time I installed one operating system, so we started with Windows, I disconnected the other drives and I'll put link above and in the description below for you to go and follow these tutorials. And that way I did not interfere with the uh, grub or the boot order the, or the EFI or UEFI order. Uh, so what it means whenever I want to boot into a single OS, I would just have to uh, restart and then press F11 to select the right boot order and then get into the OS of my choice. Now, the last one which I did, which is Mac OS, and once again, big shout out to Chris from Chris Titus Tech. Link uh, is gonna be above in the cards or in the description below. I also did leave a link to his video tutorial. Thank you, Chris, if you're watching this. Without your tutorial, I would have had to spend so many hours and headache online because Mac OS is not my forte. I've not really used it as a daily driver. I've only done a couple of repairs here and there and I've got, uh, had an iPhone for about a year, but the iPhone 5 was a long time ago. Did not like the experience. So thank you again. Unfortunately, Chris had to remove his video out of concerns. He could maybe get copyright strikes because of the nature of the Mac OS he was doing. Guys, this is not the latest, uh, what is it, Catalina at the moment. This is three versions ago. This is High Sierra, which also means that you can't really upgrade this because if you do, it will not work. On this system, which we've got is the AMD Ryzen 7 to 700X, the RX 580 and 16 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM. And we've got power supply, but I'm gonna change that, but that doesn't affect the uh, whole operating system or compatibility. But at least we know it works with AMD Ryzen, yeah? Right, so where do we go from here? Now, my plans is, number one, I'm gonna uh, insert probably three different storage um, hard drives, one for each system, because each OS takes a different filing system. Even when I was trying to transfer files for, with a USB, I had to kind of partition them and then give each of them a different filing system. You know what I'm talking about, maybe, you know, XFAT, NTFS, and then FAT32, uh, and I'll get to those tutorials. The reason I want to install three different drives for the storage is, again, because I want to be able to disconnect physically any single OS and then it doesn't interfere with my workload. I can just kind of pull uh, the disk out and place it in different system and hopefully keep working. And that also gives me a bit of uh, peace of mind for redundancy. And obviously for backing up, I probably am gonna get one single drive, maybe like a six uh, terabyte drive, partition them into three and then uh, back up each um, system on a single partition on those because I haven't got a lot of physical space to put uh, three different drives for the backup. So that's where we're gonna go. In terms of my preference, I will tell you from the get-go. I have used Windows for a long time. I have previously used Ubuntu a long time ago when I first started using tech. I've barely used Mac OS, but from what I can see uh, objectively uh, online, because I do deal with all of them uh, a lot of the times, although I've dealt more with Windows, my preference is gearing towards Linux or Linux. Uh, don't have a go at me, I don't know how to say it, Linux or Linux. And I think moving forward, I'm definitely gonna be switching to Linux or Linux as a main driver. In fact, I hope I've got some footage to show you. I've been experimenting on a different computer, which has got a Q6600 from the LG A775 socket from Intel a long time ago. And I've installed the same Linux Mint 19.2 cinnamon code named Tina, but we had to um, create a USB installation disk using the MBR partition, not the uh, GPT or UEFI partition system because it was old and it didn't have 3.0 and yada yada yada. So moving forward, I hope you're gonna stay with me on channel, subscribe, and then we're gonna go through this because I'm gonna give you an end user experience of each of the operating system 
and you guys have voted for uh, Linux or Linux to switch to, which I'm going to do first. I'm quite happy to do this. In fact, I've already uh, done, uh, I have a next video coming up, which is about what to do after you install Linux Mint, uh, just to optimize it. So we'll do that. And then I'm going to use that as a daily driver for all YouTube content creation and using uh, open source software and also hopefully do some gaming using the newer Proton uh, way of installing games and the compatibility with Steam as well. So it's looking really good. Again, other future, I want to give a shout out to Sean from Thermal Tech. If you're watching this, I have had this for now two months. They've sent me um, a 650 watt. This is the Thermal Tech Tough Power series. Uh, 650 watt and I've got another one which is an 850 watt RGB so I'm gonna swap my power supply and I've also contacted Fractal Design they have kindly sent me a window panel for my Fractal Design R5 uh, defined black whatever it's called which um, will be handy for when I want to showcase a little bit the RGB because that was not part of the original plan. But you know, things happen, I'm quite chuffed. That's it, so keep uh, tuning in, uh, leave me a comment. Uh, if you like this video, then give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you, and also um, use the bell icon notification. And please use my Amazon affiliate link, it does help out the channel. I'm gonna go and uh, I'll see you in the next one. This was Ash from Hill Tech helping you go from the B2 Techie. Go check out this video up here and that playlist down here and subscribe and also check out my other channel. And I will see you in the next one. Until next time, peace out.